Então, o compêndio da Alexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração, você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é Alexio Divina? Alexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Welcome to this Monday, June 7th, when we come together to pray sacred scripture. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth, and she's of the Word community, and I want to welcome all of you that are joining us in this Monday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time. And we will start a, a reading of a new book for the first reading for this week. It is the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. So, first reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. Responsorial Psalm is Psalm 34, and the Gospel is from St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Let's start the reading of the Word of God for today. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and from Timothy, our brother to the church of God, that is, in Corinth, including all the saints, saints throughout Achaia, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our afflictions, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we are we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which we experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The very beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. And he introduces himself saying that he's an apostle of Christ. And from Timothy, that it is with him to all the saints to all the Christians, all people would read his letter. And he started blessing God. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. So beautiful, these definitions. God is a Father of mercy. And not only one mercy, of mercies. The Lord has mercy on us. And he is never tired to show us how merciful he is to pour out mercies upon us. And he's also the God of all consolation, who consoles us in our afflictions. Have you thought about that? 
that God is a God of mercies and all consolation, that He consoles us in all of our afflictions. If you are afflicted, go to the Father of mercy. If there is something that is bothering you, that is afflicting you, that you feel that you need strength and consolation, go to the Father of mercy. He will show you His mercy. And Paul said that if we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. It means if in his ministry he is going through afflictions, it's for the sake of others. Because God will pour out blessings on others. And it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the sufferings. Do we patiently endure sufferings? Because when we do that, we receive consolation and mercy. Because the Lord is our Father. He's the Father of mercies. He will give us consolation. He will give us, he will give us everything we need to be in His presence. To, be, to know that He is with us. He is with us. Many times we are not with Him, but He is with us. The Sponsorial Psalm, Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look at Him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Taste and see how good is the Lord. Taste and see how good is the Lord. When we experience the mercy and consolation of our Lord and Father, we see how good He is, how sweet He is. Happy are those who take refuge in Him. Seek refuge in Him. Take refuge in Him. He is the Father of mercies. Sponsor your soul. Gospel. Gospel today, St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit, it, inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for, the, for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and uttered all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now we see in the Gospel today, the Gospel of the, the Beatitudes. Jesus, tell, Jesus tells the crowd, what is the Beatitudes? Blessed are those who suffer. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are weak. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the persecuted. The Lord is saying us that 
everything that we go through can become a beatitude in our life. If we are open to receive God's grace. The first reading, Paul was saying that he suffered for the sake of others. And in beatitudes is the same thing. When we suffer, we receive our reward from the Lord's hand. When we help others, when we are merciful with others, when we are pure in heart, when we mourn, when we are meek, we will receive the reward from the Lord's hand. So the Beatitudes, it's the opposite of what the world teaches. us. The world teaches us that if we are peacemakers, we are weak. The world teaches us that if we mourn, we are forgotten by God and by others. But no, the Beatitudes teach us that this is the treasury of our faith. When we live this in faith, we will have a reward in heaven. Jesus says, Blessed are you who suffer all of this in my, on my account, because of me, because of my name. Rejoice and be glad. For all the prophets were persecuted too. If you feel that you are persecuted, maybe you are being a prophet in your house, in your family, with your friends, with people you love. But don't be afraid of persecution because the Father of mercies and God of all consolation will console you. May this word today bring you consolation. May the presence of God through this, through this readings bring you consolation. Amen.